Ready to roll? <laughs> Probably should uh, get to grow some cells in that tray over there. Oh, uh, look. And I have to think about what I just said. Shame! We saw a lot here today. From species of plants to species of corns. We've been through everything. We study science. Yeah. I get lost, lost, lost what to say. Six, seven, Ten, eleven. Where did you get the sound guy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, my name is Micah, and this is Kendall, not Xavier. We might look like normal kids to you, or not. Anyways, we are actually scientific researchers and soon to become award-winning filmmakers. Mark, you don't like confidence, do you? <laughs> what he's trying to say is. Last year there was a call for audition for kids in North Carolina that will make a film about biotechnology. And you, my friends, are looking at the winners. For six months, we've been filling our brains with scientific knowledge. The first question we had to ask was, what the heck biotechnology was? And what is biotechnology used for? Why should we care? Anyways, let's get to the first segment of our film. When I was a little boy, I had a red cape and I used to pretend I was a superhero, protecting against evil and saving the world. Now that I'm older, I realize that the world really does need saving in some ways. But the villains and the superheroes are different than I imagined back then. Yes, one of our biggest challenges is our growing population. I read that there are 6.8 billion people now, and that in the next 40 years, it could grow by 38%, which would mean that by the time that we're old, there could be between 9 and 10 billion people. Can you even imagine almost 10 billion people who need clean water, fresh air, safe food, vaccines and medicines. All those billions of people who need energy, dudes. People gotta light their house, run their computers, wash their clothes, fuel their cars. How's this gonna happen without ruining the environment? Yeah, we know we gotta reduce greenhouse gases and reverse the effects of climate change. I think it's gonna be our generation that has to figure out some solutions. Okay, chill out for a minute, guys. There's a whole lot of doom and gloom. But the good news is there are already thousands of brilliant scientists working on answers to these challenges. And that's where biotechnology, our superhero, comes in. Biotechnology is a toolbox that uses living things, their cells, or even the tiny molecules inside the cells to make a product or solve a problem. Some of the products have been around a long time, like bread and cheese. But today, if you have diabetes, some kids do there's a good chance that you're taking human insulin that is produced in bacteria grown in a laboratory. It's exactly like the insulin that we make in our own bodies. Before the 1980s, diabetics had to take insulin from cows. When you think about it, a lot has changed, but the basic problems people face are still the same. We need to eat, we need to stay healthy, and we want the planet to be a good place for our kids to live. After you watch our film, you'll start to see that results of biotechnology are everywhere. So we wanted to highlight scientists working in North Carolina, which happens to be one of the leading states in biotechnology. My focus was healing, and I found out that there was a field called biopharmaceuticals. This means developing and manufacturing vaccines and medicines. So if you have anybody in your family who has diabetes or cancer or MS, they're probably using medicines that were developed and made here. Beyond medicines, though, there are also scientists who are always helping people to heal by growing new tissue or organs for people, often right from their own cells. It sounds like science fiction, but it's real. Take a look. This is downtown Winston-Salem. We're at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. It's time to see what the researchers here do. Right now, I'm going to take it out of the other end of the lab. This is Dr. George Christ. He's a professor, a researcher, and pretty much one of the leading minds here, which, in a place like this, is really saying something. Corner, where you can see uh, a technique that we use to create scaffolds. I'd heard the term regenerative medicine, but I really didn't know what it meant. But what I found 
was amazing. We do a variety of uh, things here in the Institute. Um, it's really a multidisciplinary effort and the idea is to bring people together with different skill sets and, and different expertise and that can range from um, people that are experts in biomaterials and uh, nanotechnology to people who are experts in cells, stem cells, physiology, pharmacology, uh, material science, um, a whole group um, a molecular biologist, cell biologist, because uh, the problems that we try and solve here are very, very difficult. And so um, in order to create and heal uh, living tissues and replace them in the body, we need a group of people who have a very wide view of this and who can work together on a daily basis to create the kinds of technologies we need to make this happen. Let's meet some of these team members Dr. Chris is talking about. My name is Carmen Gaines. I'm a postdoc here at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. I actually have a degree in material science and engineering, um, but right now I'm working more in the realm of tissue engineering, um, specifically biomaterials research. So what I'm doing is testing a new burn therapy um, using a keratin biomaterial. Now keratin is a protein extracted from your hair and it's actually been proven to show regenerative or healing properties with certain applications such as peripheral nerve regeneration um, and resuscitation. We're trying to regrow tissues and organs and to do that we have to know what kind of cells respond. Right, so what we could use this material for is for regenerating bone, so making new bone where other bone was damaged. So we first need to know if your body likes the material or doesn't like the material. We're working on kidney, pancreas, um, uh, trachea as well, some liver. So we work on a whole variety of uh, organs and tissue types here uh, with the expressed goal that we're trying to develop technologies that can repair and replace damaged cells and tissues and organs throughout the body. Do you have any examples of like a, a Whatever, how yeah, do scaffolds. So we talked huh? about scaffolds before and actually, oh. you know, right here we had uh, set out a couple of examples of scaffolds. So scaffolds are one of the two basic building blocks for regenerative medicine, right? The other is cells. So you think of it as bricks and mortar or the hammer and the nail kind of thing. You have to have something to put the cells on, so okay? Is of fiber or what Yeah, is that? so these can be made of all different kinds of materials. So right here you see something that might be used to recreate the digits in the end of your fingertip. And here, I hope ear. you recognize as an ear, right? And so these are things, they're made of uh, polymers, okay? So these are synthetic. And you make them basically with holes in them so that when you put the cells on top, they seep down through the holes and they sit inside. And then if you put them in a bioreactor in the right environment, they can remodel the scaffold to put down normal tissue, things that they're more used and so, to. And they become, well, they might start looking like a... They start looking like a finger, so you could put cells on there that would re reconstitute a lot of the skin and that sort of thing. Speaking of skin, Dr. Christ showed me the lab where they're developing a system that uses an inkjet printer to graft so new skin cells on the burn victims. Like the Each one of these tubes would contain a different cell type, and you would just go right along the surface here and deposit the exact same kind of cell that you need on, on different parts of the wound. Let's say the whole surface of your hand was gone from a, three, from a third degree burn or something like that. Then you would want to replace the skin on the surface of your hand, and you could do that by using a technology where you take the cartridge and you just run it over the surface of your hand to deposit stem cells along the surface of which your hand, which will then grow back, which will then grow back and form normal skin. How, That's and the how idea. long does that take? You That's a good question. It can take a, usually a period of weeks. So, in order to get into this, what degree would you have to get out of uh, college? Uh, it's almost like in all kinds of minds. It doesn't really matter what your orientation is. If you're an artist. Um, we do a lot of di digital imaging and a lot of 3D modeling and there's a lot of visualization that goes into actually making this a practical reality. If you're on the legal side of things, we have to protect our patents and our intellectual property in order to profit or get people to invest in what we do. We need the people that educate the, and train the physicians and, and surgeons that will actually use these technologies. We need the business people to create the businesses and the business models that can make this profitable so that there's money that flows into and out of this so that we can afford to do this. So uh, we need technical people, which are people that can have associate's degrees from community colleges and biotechnology. They can have um, 
they can do technical training um, if they've got bachelor's degrees in biology or any science related thing or even if you're an English major um, you can come be a technician in a lab and learn how to do some of the basic techniques while you're deciding what you want to be. Get used to this. After being shown so many cool things about biotechnology, I started to get a real interest in biotechnology. I never knew it could be used to heal, and now I fully understand the power of healing through biotechnology. I look into a very different part of biotechnology called green biotechnology or agriculture biotechnology. Researchers working in this field are just likely to be found in a cornfield as in a laboratory. Let's take a look. We're at BASF Plant Science. As you can see behind me are some research greenhouses. Let's go check it out. Excuse me sir, if you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you doing? Um, I am testing the water content in all these plants. Uh, using the what utensil are you using right there? Uh, this is a general laboratory, it's called a scupula. Hi, I'm Xavier. Would you mind if I ask you some quick questions? What are you doing sure. right now? Sure. So we take images in the imaging section okay. in the greenhouse, which is this image right here. I met a lot of different scientists with really interesting jobs, but I spent most of my time with Katie. My name is Katie Bunting. I work for BASF Plant Sciences and I am titled an assistant scientist, but I guess a more descriptive title would be a greenhouse research technician. I am responsible for different greenhouses and maintaining the plants in them. So that includes watering and fertilizing, transplanting, pruning, harvesting, the ASF Plant Science is a biotechnology company. We focus on green or plant biotechnology and helping to develop better plants for growers. Corn or maize, soybean, rice, canola, those are the, the big core crops that we focus on. The work here we do helps people around the globe. Um, we're focusing on crops that are not just here in North Carolina or here in the States, but across the globe. After Katie showed me around, we went to the lab, and I interviewed her. This is me trying to make sure she is the nervous. Right. I believe I was the nervous one. I'm just a puppet. I wonder what my football team is going to think about this. When everybody was finally ready, I decided to ask her why she chose this field. Um, I got interested in this by growing up on a farm. Um, my family has had a farm for several generations and I grew up around plants and seeing you know, the house surrounded by fields and playing in them, running through cornfields. And so that definitely got me interested in agriculture at an early age. I had a, my own little garden when I was little and that showed me all the things that are required to keep a plant alive and to get it to maturity, to seed. We have a wide variety of, of jobs here within the ASF Plant Sciences. Starting here with the greenhouse, all the way up through researchers in the labs to marketing people, lawyers, um, regulatory, business MBAs, um, all sorts of, pretty much everything. It takes a whole village. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, what are you doing? Hi. How are you doing? Pretty I'm Xavier. Good. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, we are studying corn. Mm -hmm and we're looking for ways to grow bigger, more nutritious corn. Um, and in this experiment, we've harvested years. It could take more than 10 years for a crop to go from being created in the lab to being grown by farmers. The big thing I love about my job is growing the plants. That's one of the things I've always enjoyed, even as a little kid, is playing with the plants. So that's the big thing that keeps me coming in with a smile on my face every day. But, you know, it's also being a part of the big picture and making those say, okay, you know, I grow these plants every day, but there's a reason that I grow them. 
and that reason is really cool and I'm really excited to be a part of that every day to come in and say okay me watering this plant is great for me today but it's gonna make a difference down the line for everyone. Katie and the other scientists are using biotechnology to make sure the farmers will have healthy seeds to grow crops to help feed the world. So Kendall, tell us a little bit about your research. Well, I got to go and explore industrial biotechnology. You see this carpet and this water bottle and our clothes and that furniture? Well, that all has to be manufactured. And when we manufacture it, sometimes it makes toxic waste. We have to deal with that. You see this water bottle? It's made out of synthetic fiber or plastic. Industrial biotechnology scientists are trying to figure out ways to make all this stuff and fuel for our cars using renewable resources. They can make all that by using molecules from living cells called enzymes. One of the leading companies in the world in developing these kinds of enzymes is called Novozymes. You could tell that from their name. And their North American headquarters is located in North Carolina. That's where I got to go. I'm here at Novozymes to interview a scientist about how they use enzymes to make biofuels. Let's go see what he does. And then I realized I could actually just dump the oil. The... My name is James Cronenberg. I work at Novozymes North America. Uh, what we do here is we make enzymes uh, for a variety of different applications. And these are all marketing offices here. Uh, the, the main purpose, I would say, if you want to look at it from this angle, is that uh, they can replace petroleum products. So it's a way to make the world more sustainable. You guys have a lot of paintings on the wall. Are you rolling? I think this one should be better. I do a lot of my experiments in this lab, and there's more of instrumentation room. So this is what I was talking about before. This is what we call the chicken spinner. And so what we have in here uh, are a lot of different tubes. Uh, what I've done is a, a dose response curve. So I've been, I took the, the biomass, and uh, I added the same amount of biomass to each tube, same amount of water, uh, but I varied the amount of enzyme that I added because I wanted to see uh, what the effect of enzyme addition was to the cellulose conversion. And whoa, whoa. Hold on, James. I think we're going to lose our viewers if we don't explain what cellulose and biomass is. Let's go back to the interview for more background. James explained that cellulosic biomass is the part of a plant that is not starch. Novozymes is working with other companies to develop enzymes to break down any part of a plant. It's a very new field. Uh, if you look at uh, a plant structure, it's all make it made up of sugar. So uh, whether you're talking about the cellulose um, or the starch, and starch is typically what you use from corn, but you can use any plant. Uh, all plants have cellulose, and you can, you can convert that down to sugar and biofuel. Anything that has essentially paper or, or that fiber. So I, I've been working with a company who actually what they've been doing is they can go to an office building and take all their trash and what they can then do is they can separate out uh, the plastic and they can separate out all the ash and they can separate all the glass and all the metal and then they also have all the fiber which is all from the cardboard and the waste paper that people throw away and that fiber is made up of sugar uh, and then you can convert that fiber through with our enzymes and with some heat you can break that back down to the sugar and then you can ferment that to ethanol so you can make biofuel from that too. Uh, so it's a really neat process because uh, they are literally taking trash that's being thrown away. Uh, for me, biotechnology is uh, a way to, to ease the world off of petroleum products. If you look around your house, uh, most of what you see, a lot of what you see is from petroleum. So anything that has plastic in it uh, is from petroleum. But what we can do with uh, biotech, uh, one of the things that we're actually working on is uh, taking that sugar and then you can convert that to plastic. So that's, that's pretty cool because that uh, allows you to grow the plastic as opposed to pulling the plastic out of the earth. Because you're displacing petroleum products, uh, you're uh, not emitting as many carbon uh, molecules into the atmosphere. So it's not as big of a generator of greenhouse gases, uh, which should help with climate change. Are you rolling? Um, what are some of the other jobs and things that other people do at Novozymes? 
There are a lot of different jobs. I would say you know it ranges from people working in the finance to there's uh, at this site uh, there's people who actually produce the enzymes. We have a whole production and an optimization group. Um, we also have people who are doing more of the formulation side, so product uh, generation. Is this the break room? What game are you playing? Oh, we are uh, discussing some of the ideas that we have for uh, increasing the amount of ethanol that we produce. And then we have people who are marketing the enzymes, and we also have the people who are really doing the in-depth research, the research and development R&D group. Um, I'm analyzing samples that we received from a bioethanol plant. Um, they're actually converting corn to ethanol, and I'm just seeing how efficient that their process is, because they're using our enzymes to do that. I got to see lots of people doing lots of things, and it turns out that this is only one of the many research locations this company has. This is a Danish company, so there's a group over in Denmark, uh, and then there's a group in China, uh, as well as Japan, and then also a group down in Brazil. It's been really exciting. Uh, the people here are, are fun to work with and very smart uh, and motivated to, to find ways to make the world more sustainable. After work, James and his colleagues like to go outside and play soccer. It's kind of neat that there's a cornfield right beside their soccer field. So today I learned that biotechnology creates biofuels that makes our environment more sustainable. That means that when I get older, my car might be running on corn or something. So now that I've seen this at work, I think that maybe when I get older, I'll be a scientist too. So these scientists like to play video games and soccer. They like to play as much as they like to discover new things. Kim, you like you have fun playing Wii. You wouldn't think anybody would play Wii at work. <laughs> One thing I know is that all these people love what they do, and they all love their jobs. I agree. Remember the other thing that we were supposed to find out about was that which subjects a kid should focus on in school. Those subjects are science and math. I bet you never thought that biology and algebra could save the world. Speaking of which, got to get some homework done. <laughs> you looking for something? <laughs> I can't believe you still have that. <laughs> Captain Biology. <laughs> Developed by the North Carolina Association for Biomedical Research, a science education and advocacy organization. Funding provided by the North Carolina Biotechnology Center. Filmed on location at BASF Plant Science in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. At Novozymes, North America, in Franklinton, North Carolina. And at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine in Winston-Salem, North Carolina.